Yo guys, Coach Theo here on Kumal Sands. Today I'll be giving you guys an upper body calisthenics workout designed to build muscle. You're going to get a workout structure you can follow, but really, as always, I'm giving you systems, tools, a way of thinking when approaching, in this case, trying to build muscle when having no access or just choosing not to use uh, weights or gym equipment. So I'm obviously gonna assume that you at least have access to a pull-up bar and dip bar, like an outdoor gym, but I'm also gonna suggest that you get yourself a pair of rings. It's the single most valuable piece of training equipment you can get, because when you own the rings, you own them, you can bring them anywhere. You can set up a calisthenics gym, quote unquote, with the rings where you otherwise couldn't train, and the freer movement is gonna allow ourselves to challenge our muscles in a, well, challenge them more than we could if we were fixed to a bar. But the beautiful thing with calisthenics is that it's a great place to learn how different muscles function, because when you have limited equipment, you're gonna have to actively put yourselves in positions to hit everything you want to hit. And you're gonna have to be very mindful, which I love, of course, holistic bodybuilding, body, mind, and soul, introspection and observing yourself, you know, that's something I'm big on, and we do that in our training, and calisthenics really forces you to be very aware of what you're doing. So the base structure for every workout here is going to be two pushes and two pulls that serve different purposes, and they are all kind of compound movements, right? Then it's just that we gotta adjust, we gotta regress or progress the exercise depending on our current level of strength and development. And then we're gonna walk through some bonus exercises that you could do. I'm never gonna be able to walk through everything you could do in calisthenics, but in this video, I want you to have a complete guide to how to go to an outdoor gym, or just use calisthenics and get jacked, basically. So it has always made sense to me to start an upper body workout when you train both push and pull with a pulling exercise, because when you push, you're going to use posterior back muscles as supporting muscles, but not the other way around. So starting with a pull just makes everything nice and warm, gets you prepared for pushing exercises as well. And since the most challenging calisthenics variation for pulling that you're gonna find is gonna be a pull-up variation, that's where we start. So realize that it's the movement and how challenging they are for the individual performing the movement that matters. So it doesn't matter if I can do pull-ups with 50 kilos in a belt and you have to use a band to do them. Well, if we can train to failure at our level, it's still a compound exercise that challenges. The lats mainly is what we're looking to target with a pull-up, but other back muscles and the biceps and other arm flexors as well. So the point is, do it on your level and don't think that it's like less. No, it's just, it's just like moving through the weight stack on a machine in the gym. So I'm gonna give you all kinds of little tweaks you can do to make exercises more or less challenging, but of course weight is one of them. I'll even use weight on some exercises here, but just have in mind that just because I don't show something on one particular exercise doesn't mean that you can't do it on that. So for instance, of course we can do weighted pull-ups, but one way to make a regular pull-up a bit more challenging is to make a grip wider. And I just like to use the rings then because the wrists don't really end up in a great position when you take a wider grip otherwise. So if you have a bent bar that works too, but the rings for a wide grip pull up, good variation. And here, if we've started to get strong, but we don't have weight to add, and we don't feel like doing 18 reps <laughs> of pull ups all the time, you can do an alternating ring chin up like this. So of course you're emphasizing more on the hand you're supinating, like turning your fingers towards you with. And a last really challenging pull up variation would be the archer pull up when you can see that you sort of just use the one arm as assistance pulling with almost a straight arm. So um, the majority of the work is done with one side. And yeah, it's a very good variation when you get really strong on the pull ups and don't have weight but want to make it really heavy. All right, so next we'll be moving on to our main pushing exercise, which would most often be some kind of dip. There's a lot of different variations to be told here because I definitely can't show every combination of every single little variation that you can do. But of course you could use a regular dip on bars. The reason we would typically use our dip as our main push is because it's the heaviest one. We can put our entire body weight into it, right? Then using rings, it's gonna make it a whole lot more challenging, especially if you go as deep as I do. But then just 
Keeping being tucked, raising your knees would make any dip more challenging, isolating the chest more. And then adding weight, of course. And I'll say this, you don't have to have weight in your mouth ever, really. But unironically, it puts the center of gravity in a great place for many pushing exercises and it looks beastly. And it's a free jaw and uh, neck volume. So you take that if you can. But um, yeah, so when you can do just body weight ring dips of some kind, it's a great compound in and of itself. And yeah, there's a lot of little tweaks you can do to make this one less or more challenging. A little micro optimization that always made sense to me is to alternate between a push and pulling exercise so that when you've just exhausted pushing muscles, they can rest as you go focus on a pulling exercise again. So since our main pulling exercise was more lat focused with a pull up variation, we're going to want our second pull to be more mid upper back focused and rear delt focused. And the best way to do that with calisthenics is some kind of inverted row. And there are so many different ways you can do this I'll be adding weight here on one of the sets but um, you can make it more or less challenging by where you put your feet you know if you're if it's too heavy to do it like I'm doing in the video you can drop your feet to the ground or just a lower level you can do it on some kind of straight bar but the best thing is if you have a neutral bar you can kind of do a reverse push-up it looks like like this and then what you want to have in mind, no matter how you do it, is to always get a good stretch on the entire back at the bottom and then pull with your elbows flared as much as you're able to. Because it's also what you got to realize, guys, is that we cannot completely isolate, for instance, the upper back and not move our arms with the lats at all or vice versa. It's about shifting the focus. So if we're not strong enough to pull with flared elbows to really target the upper back and rear delts, for instance, um, that you pull a little bit closer is not going to ruin that. It just brings a little bit more lat into the movement again. But this is also when you could progressively overload. If you pull in the strongest position first, then instead of adding weight, you could start flaring your elbows more. But finding your level here. That's the goal. Next up, we have one of my favorite exercises, period, really, is the ring push-up. It's amazing. You can do so many little tweaks to change the focus of this. So we're going to go through the main things here. You don't want to hang. Just It's the equivalent to pushing your butt up when you're benching, but worse. You, we remove all core engagement, and we got, get so good free core volume when we do a ring push-up. So we want to tuck our pelvis always. And then you'll see on the first set that I preview here that I sort of alternate between coming close to my body and doing it more like a fly. And when I do it more like a fly, it's way more challenging and isolates the chest more. But you got to realize, guys, it's that a press and fly, they exist on a spectrum. You can, there are many degrees here. So this is what I mean. You can have very mindful progressive overload just by gradually adjusting your form. Of course, you can add weight to an exercise like this. There are so many things you can do. You can make it easier by changing the angle, you know, so you, um, uh, yeah, you don't put as much of your body weight uh, into the exercise. So many ways. But there's one variation that I wanted to show because the dip is obviously going to target more of the lower chest. It hits the entire chest, but more the lower. And so the ring push-up is already going to hit the upper chest more. But one variation we can do to hit the, really hit the upper chest and shoulders a bit more is to actually push not straight below us, but straight uh, a bit outside of us. So it's going to be more equivalent to like an incline dumbbell press compared to a flat dumbbell press. Either way, a ring push-up variation is going to be an amazing addition to your program. Then I just wanted to show you a few variations if you don't have rings or if they are too challenging for you right now. So you can do a pike push-up to um, kind of emulate what we did with the rings there, hit more shoulders and upper chest. But we can come down to neutral angle. It's still upper chest, of course, but not quite as much of that focus. And we can come into a tucked dip for one of the more challenging bodyweight dips. We can, of course, drop our feet to make it easier. And if we don't have a band, if you have access to a similar setup here or have a workout body, you can have support for your feet and make it a little bit lighter like this. But something I want you to take with you too is this 
deep range of motion. It's better always if you can, no matter what variation, if you can get a long range of motion that emphasizes the stretched position, it's going to be beneficial not only for mobility and flexibility, but for hypertrophy as well. Like it's both a longer range of motion, so it's more challenging for this reason, but natural bodybuilders have known for a long time the best ones that emphasizing the stretch is good for hypertrophy so now we've gone through all our major movements our pushes and pulls and at the end we'll do a little recap and talk about workout structure some example workouts sets reps and such but let's move on to some additional exercises you could do to make the workout feel more complete so of course if you have some bands or some small weights you could do many little isolation exercises for the upper body but if we're going to keep it calisthenics and ring focused one great a little bit advanced curl is a pelican curl it's amazing because you get a huge stretch on the biceps it looks a little awkward but you want to as i show on all the push-up variations you want to keep your pelvis in the same kind of position it could be described as put yourself at like the top of a push-up but then you just open up your arms into a curl instead and so this that's a little tricky about progressive overload on this one and um, just standardizing your workouts is that the height at which you put the rings and where you stand like both the, where you attach the rings but how long do you make the bands to the rings all of this matters you know and i think you can just use some logic and figure out yourself what angles are more challenging or not like a steeper uh, if you lean more forward it's mostly going to be more difficult right but again <laughs> all these um, the the ring position and height and everything will matter so so if you want a nice one for the triceps this one is sort of equivalent to lying on a bench and using dumbbells doing extensions but getting a good stretch on the log head of the triceps there so you're gonna notice that with rings and calisthenics it's so easy to cheat like if i use my legs or pelvis core here at all you know or just a position I, if i hang in my hips instead of keeping my core nice and activated right so you again you just need awareness and intention in what you do and you're gonna have to why i'm a big fan of training to failure in general but especially with calisthenics and some of these movements that are going to be a little hard to standardize exactly even if you're in the same spot you know it's going to be a little tricky to make the exercise like the exact same weight quote unquote so training to failure will be good, but experimenting with your position and gradually challenging yourself more, you're gonna have to do progressive overload uh, that way with some of these exercises. Then I just wanted to show you another curl. You can do calisthenic style. Of course, you can do this with rings as well, but this is a, in the shortened position rather than the lengthened position like the pelican curl. So you'll get a good stretch on one of the heads of the biceps, but here, what we want to do, as I showed you, is not pull in the strongest way when we just think, how do I get myself from A to B? But really think about A to Z. How do I move myself? So find a position where you can move by just flexing your elbow as much as possible. Again, a great opportunity to not only train your biceps, but your ability to... Um, like it's mind muscle connection and it's control you know not cheating like actually making it challenging enough for the biceps for the exercise to well be beneficial and have the effect we want so to give you one more triceps isolation it's basically the same one as the previous one just that you use one ring so it's going to be slightly easier but it occurs to me as i see this i don't know that i exactly did this here but you can actually do the opposite of a cheat in a sense by Actually, at the bottom here, you could push yourself into a deeper tricep stretch. I know that I've gotten very sore triceps from this variation. So if there's something I'd like to add to make the workout feel complete, like of course we could add some kind of crunch or hanging leg raise kind of movement for the abs, but depending on which exercises you picked for your main pushes and pulls, you will have gotten a lot of core in there already. So of course you could have something like that, but other than that, our pushes will have worked our chest and front of the shoulder a lot, and our pulls are back and back of the shoulder, 
And maybe that mid delt is getting a little excluded as it often does. So I try to set up a sort of not upright row, not quite the face pull, but something in between with one ring here. So depending on at which angle and foot position, everything it's gonna depend a little bit, like exactly where you put the focus. But the way I do it now, it's a little bit like an upright row, but focusing a bit more on the back of the shoulder and the mid back, but it's gonna be a lot of mid delt in there as well. A little bonus just because I filmed this, an upside down ring shrug. And you'll see that I struggle a little bit with finding the position here. But that's the point here, like, okay, our row, kind of pull movement will have hit even the upper traps, but you, this you could do if you want to hit more upper traps. But you see how it's just like any kind of shrug you do with weights, but in this case, we're gonna have to be upside down. This kind of thinking, like with the inverted row, for instance, you know, this is gonna help you so much when you want to add stuff to your calisthenics muscle building program, you know. Think about stuff you do in the gym or think about the function of the muscle and ask yourself, how do I make this happen with what I currently have to work with here in the outer gym and my rings, for instance. So to conclude here and go through a little workout structure, example workouts, sets, reps, and all that, uh, let's say you're someone that's gonna opt to only do the pushes and pulls for exercises. Well, then I would typically opt to go for three sets. It really depends on the intensity and how well you nail the form and such, but generally fewer exercises, uh, more sets, more volume per exercise. So three sets would be a good rule of thumb. And let's say that I were to do this workout, which I have many times, it's based on my philosophy. I've had this kind of structure for years. And so uh, apart from recording this video, the last time I remember when I did this workout was on Gotland vacation, started with archer pull up, then I moved on to a ring dip. I did an inverted uh, row, but I didn't have any weight, so I had to go kind of high rep. And then I did a ring push up where I pushed my uh, hands kind of out more than under me to hit more upper chest. And in that case, well, they had some outdoor gym machines, so I added just playing a little bit with those or different isolations. Um, but many times, if I were to, if this was like my, it's not a vacation filler workout or something, I'm gonna make this a real true workout. Very often I'd add something like the pelican curl and maybe a triceps uh, isolation as well. And maybe something like the upright row like um, ring exercise I showed there. Sometimes I would have brought a band or something like that too. But then let's say we're a beginner just to give another version of it. Maybe we have a banded pull-up or a negative pull-up because we can't do uh, regular pull-ups yet. I would recommend the negative mostly. It's more like the real deal. That's how I learned it. That's how I coach it to most people. And then let's say maybe we cannot do a ring dip, but we're strong enough to do a regular dip. So that's our next exercise. And then um, maybe we can do an inverted row, but we're not strong enough, so we have to take our feet a little lower so we can still pull with flare elbows, you know, to isolate the upper back, rear delts. And maybe we do a push-up, deficit push-up through a long range of motion as our second push exercise. And when it comes to reps, um, the, I would say generally, like lower than five, the, then you're not strong enough to train this variation yet. Pick an easier variation so you can get above, five or above reps. I mean, you can go all the way up to 20 on many, but many times it's like, why even? You know, so five to 15 generally. And then, then it doesn't really matter. As long as it's close enough to failure and you progressively overload your workouts, you're gonna be able to build great muscle with a workout like this. There you go, guys. There you have a system for how to go about building muscle using body weight exercises only or mostly limited equipment like this. And hopefully, even if you, like me, aren't gonna go full calisthenics and just have it as part of your training, hopefully you picked up some programming ideas and just um, understanding of how to think when you want to target a certain muscle and such. Similar things I hope you got out of this video. Patrons will have gotten a preview to this video, but other than that, guys, you know, I do the holistic bodybuilding coaching. You can send me a DM or email me, it, a DM on Instagram, it's in the description below. You can pick up my training book and please subscribe for more content about fitness, fasting, losing weight, building muscles, self-improvement, stoicism, mental health, philosophy, spirituality, mindset. It is the mindset, guys. Use your brain to build your body. Peace.